welcome back to my shop, Rob from Wesley Summercraft here. Today I've got this willow bowl on my lathe. And welcome back to my shop, Rob from Wesley Summercraft here. Today I've got this willow bowl on my lathe. I have finished turned this. And welcome back to my shop, Rob from Wesley Summercraft here. Today I've got this willow bowl on the lathe. I rough turned this several months ago, and this is one that I rough turned at the same time. Uh, this one's got a pretty nasty crack through in the middle of it, but it might be salvageable. But uh, for the meantime, this one I've finished to approximately 3 16th of an inch thick. Um, it's got some beautiful figure in it, it's got some crotch feature in there, and there's a branch just here. There was a branch going through here. Um, yeah, it's not finished yet. I've sanded this down to 400 grit, wet sanding with oil, mineral oil. Now what I would like to do is do something a little bit different. I want to do some carving, which I haven't done on any of my projects, I don't think, really. Um, I want to do something just a little bit different. I want to just get outside of my comfort zone. So what I'm going to do actually with this right now, I, I skipped through the process of, of turning it. What I'm going to do now is bring you in and we're going to finish this with Yorkshire Grit and Hampshire Sheen High Gloss. And then we're going to set about carving it. Now I'm not going to go colour, not doing it. But uh, let's see how it goes, shall we? <laughs> Put this one back. Get rid of that piece of crap. All right, let's get the camera in. Oh yeah, I remember. Turn that bloody TV off. All right, look at that. That's bloody lovely. That is. That's lovely. Yeah, ain't that lovely? Don't do anything other than finishing it now. Okay. And looking at this bowl, what do you see? Do you see anything? I'm telling you what I see. I see a meteor coming through here and a Martian landscape with mountains right here. That's kind of what I'm seeing. So I'm going to go with that theme. I'm going to highlight what I think is a horizon and do something with the meteor. I'm not sure what, but we'll see. First of all, I have to finish this, take the foot off, the tenon, and then go about carving. So it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a bit of a process, but let's see how it goes. All right, so the first thing first, I'm gonna just spin it and see if anything comes off of it still. I did put some oil on this, but I'm thinking that that's dry. Just a little bit of dust on there. All right, so I know exactly what I'm gonna do now. Great. I need a glove. I need a glove. All right. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is clean this with alcohol. That will remove any kind of oils or any kind of debris that may be in the grain. Okay, so it didn't remove much, but it did remove a little bit. That is now dry already. So what I'm gonna do now is apply some sanding sealer. Oh, 
What I use for sanding sealer is shellac watered down with mineral spirits. This is bullseye shellac from Home Hardware here in Canada. You can get it at uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever you want to get it from. It's getting a bit gunky now, getting down to the last little bit of it. But uh, it lasts a long time, goes a long way. Okay, so let's just get that. You don't want this to you don't want this to uh, smear. You don't want it thick. You want it quite thin. dry. I might even put a little bit more on. I said more on. Beautiful piece of wood. It's almost going to be a shame to carve this up, but I'm going to! Okay, so what I'm going to do now is denib this. I'm just going to use a little bit of 600. I'm just going to denib this, and then I'm going to apply my Yorkshire grit. There are no streaks or smears, and you have to let that dry. If you don't let that dry, you will get some streaks and smears when you sand it. The heat will build up, it will melt it, and you'll end up with a streak. So in slow speed, I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit just to denib the wood because it's raised the grain just a little bit. I can already feel that being a lot smoother than it was moments ago. Now if you have reverse on your lathe, if you have reverse on your lathe, you could do it in both directions and that would be even better. But I do not, don't have it. Beautiful, okay. Right, eventually I'm going to fix that because I have to reverse chuck this and remove that tenon. So for now I'm really only concerned about from here forward and then the inside for finishing anyway. Right, now we're going to go with Yorkshire grit. So I've got my paper towel and I've got my tub of Yorkshire grit. You can see that. It's one of the last metal ones. Aluminum, aluminium, however you want to call it. That's probably too much. I use a lot of it, but that's okay. So I put my sanding sealer on. First of all, I cleaned the wood with alcohol. I put my sanding sealer on. I denibbed it. And now I'm just applying Yorkshire grit by hand all over the entire bowl. I'll rub it in by hand for a bit, go in all directions, circle motions, however you want to do it, and I'll do it to the outside as well, do the whole thing. Now this thing is going to bring the shine up before I even get the finish on it now. When I start, when I start the lathe, I'm going to bring it around the front and show you this.
Okay, so let's start with the inside on slow speed. I'm running about 630 RPM right now. That's as slow as this lady will go. Just doing the outside as well. Using the same cloth that I applied the Yorkshire grip with, just to get the most out of all of it. Making sure I get every every pops, every part of it. Then you can start bringing the speed up. Where I always bring my hand in. This is my catching hand. Should the lathe let go, I always feel like I feel safer when this is hand is just covering the bowl. Speed up. Right now we're at 1100. Gonna bring it up now to about 1600. That grit has now done its job. change to a fresh piece of paper towel. You can go faster if you like, to whatever speed you're comfortable with. At this point, heat is okay. If you feel heat under the paper, that's okay. Different story when you're sanding. Just trying to remove any kind of residue that's left on the bowl. I've got some dirt on there from the uh, chuck actually, some oil. So I'm going to change my paper. Make sure that I've got all of the residue off of the bowl. Nothing's coming off on the paper. As you can see, nothing's coming off on the paper. And that bowl now has a very smooth finish. Equivalent of about a thousand grit, I would say. Just beautiful. So now what we can do is we can apply our finish of choice, which today is Hampshire Sheen High Gloss. Okay, so I'm now gonna apply the Hampshire Sheen by hand to start with. Just get a little bit on my paper towel, don't need a lot. And rub that in by hand. All over on the inside and then on the outside as well.
and then we'll just leave that for about 10 minutes just to go tacky it will dry a little bit and then we can come back and we can buff it to a shine and again we can put as many coats of Hampshire sheen on as we like to get an even glossier finish but I often find that one coat is enough Okay, so I'm hoping you could see that. I wasn't sure if it was better with or without this light, but uh, what I'm going to do now is I've, I'm going to buff this to a shine, and then I may I may put two or three coats on. We'll see. But right now the it's coated in Hampshire sheen and it's tacky, and uh, I'm going to have this in high speed and buff it to a shine. <laughs> I hope you can see how just shiny that is absolutely beautiful I actually think that one coat is plenty for this all right so this is where it gets a little bit scary what I need to do is I need a, a block to uh, reverse truck this so I'm going to use this piece of uh, whatever it is I have no idea it could be maple not sure what it is actually but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this between centers I think and put a tenon on it a bigger tenon that will go in my big jaws and then clean off this surface and I'll put some uh, some of this rubber cloth in front of it and I'll put my bowl on that and bring my tailstock up to the tenon and then I can remove the tenon hopefully without making a funnel that is yet to be seen. This is what I'm left with. I have to fix, I have to fix this. So I remove it, it's very thin, it doesn't weigh very much, but as you can see, the shine on that piece of wood is just beautiful and the movement in the wood is, is really pretty. So I just hope that I don't wreck it by doing some carving. This is my foot that I now have to take care of. Okay, so this is my waste block that I'm going to use to jam my bowl against. Um, always remember to leave your center mark when you're going to remove a tenon. That's going to help you align this, hopefully, fingers crossed, perfect. So I'm going to get my piece of cloth. which is going to go against that and cushion the bowl from getting damaged from the piece of wood. Put that against it, bring my tailstock up, and line that up with my center mark. Give it some pressure. Make sure it's not wiggling around too much. And that is now spinning perfectly true. Hey, it worked. Look at that. Right, so now I'm gonna take my bowl gouge. So now I'm gonna take my bowl gouge and remove as much of this foot as I can right to a nub. And then the final nub I will just sand away. I'll just nibble away and get rid of it. Um, and then I'll give it a final sand, get it finished. Actually, I'll get it finished before I remove the nub and take it off the lathe. I'm gonna, because I've got to sort this out here, but uh, we're getting there. Okay, as you can see, there's a little bit of ugliness right here that I have to get rid of. But that's okay. I've got to take it really light, because it is quite thin. 
So uh, I'm going to be using my Ellsworth bowl gouge again and I'm going to just start to remove this now. Just fingers crossed I don't make a funnel. Where's my face shield gone? Where is it? Face shield, there it is. Alright, let's get this done. Okay, so I've put a piece of wood under the bowl. It's flexing, it's so thin. So hopefully I can now sand this with this down to a point and then I'll use a smaller head and I'll remove as much as I can. Okay. Oh shit. it through that whole video thank you guys for watching uh, that was videoed quite a few years ago and I never did carve that bowl that's as far as it got so it sat on the bench over there for probably well I don't know how many years it's been but um, it sat on the bench over there start again And thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry for your disappointed because there is no carving. It never got finished. That project ended right there and then. It sat on the bench over there since that since that day. And I think eventually it cracked and I think it got thrown in the garbage or the fire pit. I really don't know. But um, I found that footage today and I thought, hey, why not release it? with very minimal editing so you'll hear me talk way more than I normally do in that video but I thought maybe you'd enjoy watching. So yeah sometimes projects get shelved and sometimes they just get canned. That was a canned one. Uh, very minimal editing on this video just figured you guys might enjoy the freedom of me talking more than I normally do. Anyway have fun, take care, don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you again for the next turning project. I do have a bowl on the lathe, although this one's not getting videoed, it's just for a buddy at work. So uh, take care now, bye now.